How do you use green screen in 3D? Let's find out. All right, so we're gonna be using Premiere Pro for today and we're gonna be chroma keying this out. Typically you do this on After Effects, whether it's chroma keying it out or actually rotoscoping out the subject, but for efficiency's sake, we're just gonna do this quickly on Premiere Pro. So once you have your footage imported into the timeline, head over to the effects tab and type in ultra key. Drag and drop that right onto the clip itself. Then head over to the default tab and click aggressive. Take the dropper tool and then click the green. Now immediately you can see that the background's been eliminated, but we still need to clean it up. So let's get back to the tabs and and under my generation, let's open that up and go to pedestal and put that to the max. Over to the shadow, make it a little less and then the highlight all the way down. You can take a look at the footage and you can see that it's a lot more clean. Next thing we're gonna do is head over to the masking tool and we're just gonna mask right around the border of this. And boom, we just created a full clean plate. All right, so we're gonna be able to do some fun stuff now. The program we're gonna be using is Blender. It's free, it's available online. I'll leave the link for it in the description. With this, we're gonna be able to import our footage, import digital assets, and create an entire 3D scene out of it. I recommend you guys checking out a website called sketchfab.com. You can download some cool digital assets, 3D models. So I actually found a 3D model of a building, and we're just gonna start with that. I like the way it is. It's, I'm just gonna leave it centered there. I'm not gonna move it. By the way, before you do anything, I'm just gonna click this button over here. Make sure the texture button is enabled. Now, next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna head over to File, Import Images as Planes. So you're gonna wanna click that and then you can import your footage. My plate is right here and I will just import it directly and it's in right here, plate one. I'm just gonna disable my building real quick. We're just gonna kinda look at this little guy over here hit that make sure that's selected and then head over to the shading tab at the top and you're gonna be presented with these nodes don't worry we're not doing anything crazy with these select this single node here just move it to the side a little bit zoom in pay attention to the frames we got 374 frames in total and then it starts at frame one so this is just an indicator for our timeline let's head over back to the layout tab over here and then our timeline is capped at 250 so let's make it 374 hit enter and now it starts at one and ends at 374 and this would be the duration of this entire clip next thing we're gonna do let's click the x-axis over here center that up and then you want to hit the rotation tool click control on your keyboard hold this down until it's lining up with the z-axis there we go and then you can get out of that and kind of see what it looks like you can line it up with the grid a little bit more by pulling it up so I'll just put it along the red line here enable our building once more we'll select our footage again Let's center it up here, pull it all the way to the top. Scale wise, we gotta adjust this. So click S on your keyboard. If it's too big, then you can just scale it down or scale it up. In my case, I gotta scale it down a little bit more. And then I'll pull it all the way down. I'm just gonna pull it off to the side because I want it to be close to that railing behind me. So that's kind of how it looks. By the way, you want to make sure your project file is at 24 FPS if you shot in 24 FPS. Make sure your frame rates are matching. So now I want to add a bit of a background into our scene. I actually downloaded some stock footage of a cityscape and I'm just going to import it into this. I'll leave a link in the description for the website that I used. When you play through it, it's supposed to be blurry and then it goes into focus and we're just going to play with that. Let's adjust the perspective on this so let's hit the x-axis hit the rotate button control on the keyboard and literally just pull it until it matches with the z-axis and then we're just going to scale this up next thing we're going to do is add a camera into the scene so we'll go ahead and click add we'll just go to the bottom and click camera it should come up to where your cursor was you can go ahead and just pull that up camera's looking a little big so we're just going to adjust the size of it a little bit cool now we want to see what it looks like from the camera's perspective we'll either click the camera button over here or we can just click zero on our keyboard now nothing's quite in view in the correct way so we got to adjust the camera so you can head over to your object properties tab just play with the location xyz axis and the rotation and try to get an angle that you like all right, now because we shot it in vertical format, I'm gonna have to make the camera vertical as well. So what we can do is go over to our output properties and then we're just gonna go to the resolution and switch these. 
1080 over here and then 1920 on the Y perfect so now we got a perfect vertical format here now we can go back to our object properties we can adjust the camera angle a little bit more so I kind of want to start it from maybe far back so you see a little bit of the building yeah and also keep in mind if you head over to the camera properties over here you can change the focal length and adjust it to how you like I think let's start with 35 for this one and now you can see that it's revealing a lot more right click on your mouse insert keyframe and we'll just do location and rotation we can move the camera towards it so from the properties you can go ahead and zoom in and here's a little cheat because the shadows on the feet won't look perfect I usually try to keep the bottom feet a little covered by something in the foreground so maybe by this bar here or something like that so if we play it back from the first frame here's what it looks like I kind of want to add something interesting to this so I'm gonna go to the camera settings and we're gonna actually adjust the focal length so here's what I'm gonna do I'm gonna start from where we last put the keyframe and I'll go ahead to focal length over here and just click this it should be on the same keyframe over here and then we'll go maybe a few frames over and then I'm gonna do this to 50 let's see how far it goes okay let's try 80 yeah I think I like that so we'll keyframe that then head over to the object properties again and we'll just adjust the framing there we go and then you can add the keyframes for all of that so now that we got our camera animation down and set up the way we want it we're gonna play with the keyframes a little bit this step might be a little bit overwhelming initially but I promise you it's pretty straightforward what we're gonna do is make sure you're on the main timeline select all these keyframes and make sure your camera is selected by the way so you can see these keyframes head over to this clock button over here find graph editor click that and now you'll see a bunch of dots pop up on the screen I'm gonna head over to the key button over here and we'll hit sample keyframes now you'll notice a bunch of keyframes popped up from the ones that we plotted this adds more keyframes adds smoother movement but now I want to make it a little bit more smooth so on your keyboard click alt and O at the same time on your keyboard and you'll see the curves change this results in smoother movements overall so I'm just gonna do it a few times now we'll head over back to our regular timeline now that we have our camera movements done we can move on to the next step we're gonna do the depth of field of the camera so on your camera's properties see where it says depth of field make sure it's enabled you want to pull the tab down on that where it says focus on object you're just gonna hit the drop tool and then you're gonna select your plate that's gonna automatically select this so this means wherever your camera goes it's always focusing on your main plate so everything else in the background is gonna be kind of blurred out depending on how much you pull I'm actually gonna increase it then to maybe eight our bokeh on our camera should match that in the background the f-stop this is where it gets interesting let's go to the first frame and let's see what this looks like so we'll pull the f-stop all the way down if you're looking at this in the regular viewport shading to enable the depth of field you can head over to the tab on the side here go down and click depth of field and now everything goes blurred now this is where we can control the level of focus f-stop is at the lowest it can possibly be right now for something like this for wide shots I like to show more of the background so I'm actually gonna start at one and see what that looks like okay building is still a little bit out of focus so I'm gonna actually start with five here keyframe that put that there and then play through next thing we're gonna work on now is doing some fine-tuning with details in the background maybe I'm noticing when the camera is playing the background footage that we got is a little bit cut at the top so I'm just gonna increase the size a little bit more then we'll pull it high up I think that would look kind of cool so now I'm noticing at the bottom here there's a bit of a gap if you have sketchfab installed in your blender as a plugin perfect you can import models really quick otherwise you'd have to just get them from the website I'm just gonna search let's do road 
So I'm seeing some roads here. This looks interesting. Now, if you want to see what it looks like, you can click here, take you directly to the website to view the model. Credits to this dude who 3D modeled this. Okay, cool. Yeah, I'm cool with this. Yeah, that looks good to me. So we'll head back into Blender and simply just import that. Let's just exit the camera view and zoom out. All right, so this thing is huge. So we'll just have to readjust the scale for this. Go ahead and click on road on the tab here. Click S on your keyboard and you could just scale it down. And we'll actually just adjust it from here. So now if we really want to get an idea of what this actually looks like, we can go ahead to render view and see what this looks like. Go to your render properties. Right now, mine is currently on the EV engine. So we'll just switch it to cycles and then we'll do GPU on the device. So now we're going to be able to focus on lighting the scene. So if we take a look at this outside of the camera view, you can see that it's pretty dark. Not much is lit up. So let's go back to the camera view. Let's select our footage, your plate, and let's head over to the clock button over here and we'll do shader editor. Yet again, we're faced with the dreaded nodes. I promise you guys, this is pretty easy and straightforward. So all we're going to have to do here is we'll select color from our plate node and then we'll pull it down to emissions. Now you can see our plate footage is lit up a lot, but I kind of want it dark too still. So I'm just going to make it 0.2. I think that looks okay. And then make sure you guys can copy these settings for the texture. So metallic is at the max. Specular is a little bit lower here. Roughness around this area. Let's select our background footage so our city footage it'll give you the nodes for that as well so let's do the same thing pull the color all the way down to emissions and now it's wow super lit up you can look at it from our camera perspective again i kind of want to light it up more so i'm just going to put it at three we can go back to our regular timeline just see what this kind of looks like it's looking like a proper nighttime scene Now we can add more lighting into this to sell it a little bit more. So what I'm going to do is let's select our cursor and put it right in the middle over here. And then we'll go over to our add tab and we're just going to go to the light and add a sun. So now you can see a sunlight has been added and this pretty much acts as exactly what it says, a sun. Click the rotate tool and move it around. You can start to see shadows being formed. Angle it in a way that looks good to you. I think that looks good. Let's see how this looks in, in other scenes. Cool, it's definitely creating a shadow. It's pretty dope. Okay, that's pretty cool. I like that. Now, to sell it even more, we can actually select the sun again and do shadow caustics. This will just calculate more shadows and lighting more accurately. So we'll go to color over here. We're just gonna boost the color to maybe a little bit blue on the color wheel, just to sell that it's like more on the nighttime side and it's like moonlight. And we'll pull it down a little bit here on the whites so it's not too, too strong. So now we're ready to render. You guys can honestly just copy my settings. First thing we're going to do is we're going to head over to our render properties. Make sure you can click GPU compute and this will give you the best results. We're going to go into render over here. Make sure this render tab is enabled. Max samples. Let's put it at 120. Sampling is pretty much just to clean up the noise on the screen when it renders. For noise threshold. Let's just put, let's just add a two at the end over here. See where it says denoise? You're going to open that. Make sure it's checked and then denoiser. I'm going to go to optic X, enable light tree. Now we're going to go to simplify and make sure that's enabled. Open that tab there too. We can pick the resolution of the textures in the scene for the textures of our models and everything. I usually like to put it somewhere between 4,000 to 8,000. In this case, I'll just do 4,000 to render it quick. We don't need motion blur actually, so we'll keep that unchecked. Let's go to performance over here. We'll use tiling. Make sure that's enabled. This is pretty much like the render process I usually like to put it at 512 seems to be the best range for me I'll enable spatial splits I'll enable persistent data this all just makes it faster overall first section is set now we'll head over to our output properties we're gonna be rendering this in 1080p pretty much so make sure it's 1080 over 1920 to keep it vertical and at that resolution and then we'll make sure render region is checked corrupt to render region is checked make sure it's still 24 FPS pick where you want to save it from here. So I'm just going to do that really quick. And once you find where you want to save it, hit cache result. 
Now, there's two ways to render this. We can do this with PNGs where it renders frame by frame to save time. And for the sake of this tutorial, I'll, I'll do it as a full video format. So we'll just go to file format and we'll click on FFmpeg video. And then we'll go to the encoding tab over here. For the container, we'll just do MPEG4. Video codec will be H.264 in the regular MP4 format. Output quality, let's just do high quality. Encoding speed, I usually put it at real time. And then we'll go to the post-processing tab at the bottom here. We can put the dither all the way down, uncheck the sequence, make sure only the compositing is checked. And then we'll head over to our compositing tab at the top and we'll click use node. These two nodes will pop up. Up. Let's head over to our view layer properties and then we'll make sure that our denoising data is checked and it's going to show you a bunch of options on the nodes now. Head over to add over here and we're just going to search denoise and we're going to literally put it in between this so it's connected like this. All you got to do now is pull the normal to the normal, albedo to the albedo and then we'll head over to the add again and now we're going to type in glare. And we'll, from streaks, we'll do fog glow. Medium, we'll do high and put the size at seven. So this pretty much adds a little bit of bloom to your lighting. So it looks a little bit more realistic. So now we can head back to layout and you're pretty much set to render. All you got to do is click your render button and boom. That's it for this green screen tutorial. If you found it helpful, I'd really appreciate you hitting that like button and subscribing to the channel. This was my first tutorial for this kind of stuff, especially after many of you have been requesting for one. So please leave a comment down below. Let me know what you'd like to learn in the future. Thanks for watching and I'll see y'all in the next one.